I want to ask you, how did you, like, how did you feel growing up? Well, um, I, I, I believe I had a pretty normal childhood. Um, just, I remember my first day of school. I was four years old. I was one of the youngest um, kids in my class. And I had, my teachers were husband and wife. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Dougals. Oh, you remember Diggles. that? Yes. <laughs> Dougals. And they were so sweet. They were like grandparents to us, like the extended grandparents to us. Um, and I just remember, um, you know, the different things that they taught us in class. And everybody, they taught us everybody was like family. And so that's what I grew up um, believing um, we get everybody in the class got along. Um, and then we went, went on our way to, i say, junior high school. And it was just the same, almost the same people um, from kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade. So it was pretty cool. So you didn't have, like, a change of scenery? Because everybody knew everybody, so y'all was just going. Well, we, we got new, of course, new kids coming into the school or some people may have left and moved away and we kind of missed our friends, but eventually we grew up and was like, okay. Um, we never, some of them we never saw again. Some of them reached back and we still communicate. Um, a lot of the people that I grew up with, we are still friends to this day. Um, and like I was um, thinking about like how many different, um, backgrounds was in my in my school, so we had um, friends that were Asian, um, uh, Latino, of course African American, um, and we had some kids that were from European descent, um, things like that. We we pretty much had a real well rounded, um, diverse community, and it, within our school. So this started from middle school on up. Yes. 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 It was awesome because like I say, we didn't when when we were in class, um, we didn't see the color lines. It didn't matter whether you were black, brown, whatever. We all got along. We all did things together. And if somebody hurt, we all hurt. If somebody was happy, we all were happy. And so that's pretty much how we were raised in school. And then at home, it was the same way. My my parents went to um, schools that were um, integrated, if that makes sense. And they had friends that were all um, ethnic backgrounds. It didn't matter. And that's, you know, that's how we were raised. Um, I remember my dad worked at ComEd. And uh, he would take us, you know, to work with him on some days when they had family days. And we got a chance to meet a lot of his coworkers. So I grew up watching a, a normal community. I didn't see anything different. It, it was just everybody. Difference. Right. Everybody just were human beings to us. That was it. Yeah, I didn't experience nothing like that until, okay, middle school, yeah. But it didn't happen until I really got to high school where it was more so... A lot of different races. Yeah. And I wasn't used to it at first. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. But then, like, as I kept going, like, sophomore year, I was used to it by then. Yeah. Until I transferred and moved back into where it was just, I want to say, a black community. Yeah. So I, I liked it, it, though. It was nice to me. Everybody got along. Yeah. That's pretty much it for me. Like, when I, um, when I would, um go to school I saw everybody like family but then when I went over to junior high school it was like so so the first school I went to Ralph Bunch it was in Markham and it was pretty much um I want to say pre-k through fourth third grade and then when I got in the fourth grade I went over to uh, what is called Warren Palm Middle School. And then the junior high school was attached to it, and it was on the other side of the building, of course. So um, when I went to middle school, that's when I um, experienced a little bit of racism. Um, 
And that wasn't within the school. It was actually on my way to school or home from school. So we had to um, go through Hazelcrest. And at that time, Hazelcrest was predominantly um, Caucasian. There were some Hispanic and Asian people, but, um, and a few black families. But it was just going to and from school is where we experienced the issues. Um, and that was pretty much a lot of those families had not accepted integration. They they were totally against it. Um, they actually moved their children out of the school districts and put them in a private school. There was a, a private school near um, my school. And... Um, yes. <laughs> I'm you so okay? sorry to interrupt. I'm you want, okay. You want my water? No, no, no. I'm totally okay. fine. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> you okay? Please continue. Okay. So um, mo uh, most of the racism, like I said, ex that I experienced um, came from the kids that lived in the neighborhood that did not attend our school. They went to a Catholic school nearby. Um, but eventually, as we got older, we had to go to high school with these same kids and everything was totally different. Like, it went from us fighting, which I was, like, really shocked. Like, why are we doing this? Um, and then we got in high school, and they became our best friends. It was like none of the fighting or the bickering or anything, any any type of racial um, tension that was going on. It never, it was like it never happened. It was like we woke up one day and everybody was friends. It was just so weird to me. I don't even remember when we became friends. It just happened. It's like everybody kind of didn't know any better. They right. just going based off of what they're taught at home at or home. told. Exactly. And that is one of the things that I um, realized growing up that is it is a taught behavior. It is a taught um, thing. And, it, and it's very negative because children can't go to school. When they're, learn when they're in that type of environment at home, they can't go to school and focus on education. They're going to school re wor worrying about who's sitting next to them. It's and like a distraction. Sh exactly. It shouldn't happen. Not only is it, is it a distraction for them, but it's a distraction for the child that doesn't look like them. Like, why are you bullying a kid just because they don't look like you? They don't have your skin color. Nobody looks the same anyway. Everybody is different. Everybody has their own identity. Um, me and my mom, I'm her identical twin, but we have our differences. Um, identical twins have their differences. So it should be the same when it comes to um, other people. We're all human beings at the end of the day. Um, what makes us different is our different identities. We have different fingerprint. We have different blood type, we have different um, things that we like and don't like, but as far as our outer appearance shouldn't have anything to do with whether or not we're going to be friends or family. And so when I got in high school, I saw everything come together like it was in my elementary years, and I was happy for that because at the end of the day, when I became an adult, it was easy for me to adapt to any environment. Like, I can work in any environment. I could be the only African-American person in the building and still get along with everybody well. You really would have to just be somebody who's just not ready to receive me to not get along with me. And a lot of, that, a lot of the times when stuff like that happens... They, they don't want to take the time to get to know others. Um, I believe that you should know people, not just look at them and decide um, what, what, you, what you're going to feel about them. Right. You should get to know them. Um, have you ever experienced that um, as a, an adult? Because I know you said you had, um, you never really experienced that as a kid until high school, but then when you became an adult, did you have any of those kind of experiences? Actually, yeah, but I don't know if I can speak on that because it's, like, work-related. Yeah. But, yeah, and it was based off of 
like he wound up calling the police on us and everything really? and lied. Wow. So it was that. I'm sorry you experienced that. Yeah. I was, look, because that was like my first time really seeing it hands on. You know, I always hear about stuff like that. But actually seeing it, and also, I want to say it's like within our African American community, it's the whole thing where, you know, like you said, we are all human beings, mm -hmm. shapes, sizes, different colors. But then there used to be an issue where a lighter person like you, you're lighter than me, it would become, oh, well, I'm black and you're a light skin, so light skins are better than dark skins. And that was confusing because yeah. I'm like, what? We're all, as you said, same human beings. That just different races. That is something that I um also experienced and I, and I'm glad you mentioned that because there is a, a situation where people within the black community have issues with each other. I mean, we see it every day with a lot of the And I feel that it was on. due to that because yeah. it's like if you're lighter then you're closer to, you know, a different race yeah. instead of you being African-American. Right. So now you're going to talk down on a, a African-American who's darker than you right. because you feel like you have to or right. I don't know, whatever people excuses be. I know, I know. And the thing about it, like you said, like I've noticed it in, on both sides because it's like a stereotypal uh, type behavior when – like you said, a darker skinned person may have had a bad experience with a lighter skinned person, and they just assume that every light skinned person is either conceited or that they're too. better. And it's the other way around, too. Like, um, to me, again, I, I just wish that people would take the opportunity to get to know people and not have some type of automatic instant stigma against. A person just because of what they see, you know. what I'm saying, get to know that person for yourself. Don't go by what someone else says. It's just like if, if I said five different things about you that were negative to another person, and they just went solely off of what I said instead of getting to, to know, know you for who you are. And that's pretty. Ooh, that's pretty much how. Um, that's pretty much how um, it is with with the different race racial issues. You watching TV, you're seeing all of this negative stuff being put on TV and social media, things about one group of people, and you just assume that that is true for everybody right. that fits that description. And so, what I would like to do as an individual. It's to try to erase those stigmas, um, those stereotypes, and try to do what I can. I know I can't reach everybody, but the more people that I can impact, the better from my standpoint. It's to let people know that it doesn't matter um, what you heard about a person or what you see on the outside you have to give a person an opportunity to to show them, to show you who they are, to show their personality. Um, you have to allow me to show you what my capabilities and my strengths and my weaknesses are. And even if it's not favorable or something that you like, let's see what we can do to meet each other in the middle to try to fix whatever differences we have. Because we're all going to be different. We're all going to be different regardless of what we, how much we want to be the same. We can, we, we're never going to all be the same. Tanya, um, you spoke earlier about the students who you used to fought, like fight with and then you went to the same school and then um, you became friends. Did you have conversations around the shift in your relationship? Right. With those people directly? Um, when we were, like I said, when we were, when we were going to, to high school with these girls, 
and I'm sure it was some some guys too. But I, I, I it's it's a a group of girls that stood out most to me because that is the that is the group that we mostly had interaction with, negative interaction with, um, going back and forth to school. But when we got in high school, and we attended, I say freshman orientation, um, they pretty much explained the rules, the do's and the don'ts. And then when it was time for the first day of school, they they put us in um, in our homeroom. They call it homeroom. That's the first class of the of the day, uh, based on your last name. And so everybody in my class was between, I say, R, because my last name is Reeves, maybe through last name T. And so pretty much um, my class was full of the R's because it was so many of us. They put us, almost all of us, in one class. And it didn't matter what your skin color was. It didn't matter what you liked, what you didn't like. We all were put in this classroom, and we had to realize or decide how we're going to make this thing work because fighting was not allowed, racial slurs weren't allowed, any, any negative communication with each other wasn't allowed so they put us in different groups we had different projects um you know on the first day of school they played the a name game you know so that was our opportunity to get to know everybody um we were allowed to share a funny story pretty much how we're doing here having a conversation um just getting to know one another so by the time we graduated out of high school I don't even remember when we all decided that we were going to be friends. I just remember us hanging out, doing things together. Um, we, we, we didn't have a choice. We were in chemistry class. We got a lab partner that we didn't get to choose. Um, in gym, we, had, we got put into teams, like if you were teaching us how to play basketball or they were teaching us how to play volleyball or different sports, swim team and all of that stuff. We got put into teams. We didn't get to choose who our partner was. So if you wanted to win, guess what? You're going to have to be a team player. And then that formed friendships. So I was kind of um, glad about that because I know when you hear different stories about what happened in history, they weren't allowed to form partnerships. They weren't allowed to be friends. They weren't allowed to be on the same team with someone that was a different race. So it is, it's totally different now. Um, colorism wasn't, wasn't as highlighted, if that makes sense. Very. Um, you spoke a little bit about your teachers in kindergarten, but what do you remember of the teachers that you had in high school? Are there any that had a particular impact on you? Did you sense that they treated some people differently than others? Um, yeah. So that's a good question. So when it came down to the teachers, most of my teachers didn't care what color you were. They just wanted us to learn. And they did everything that they could to make sure that we learned. I had one African-American teacher who was just hard on African-American students. And I never could understand why is he so hard on us. And as an adult, I realized that he was trying to make us better and trying to make us understand that it doesn't matter what color you are, you still can do this you it was it was it was a chemistry what it was a geometry class and he was he didn't he didn't take no bs from us period um if you didn't get it you had to stay after school you have to come to tutoring he wasn't setting aside a time or any of that but the other teachers they were a little bit more easy to deal with and they didn't care what color you were they taught everybody based on their level their needs um I have two um one is a 
counselor. And I think his name was Mr. Sudar. And he was an older gentleman, and he was great. I, I, You know, he's one of those counselors that you wish you could have him follow you through the rest of your life. And he pretty much gave me um, advice and classes that um, pertain to my what the things that I like to do, um, things that I wanted to do in my career. But he also made sure that I had the classes that were meeting my graduation requirements. And so he made sure that by the time I graduated out of high school, that I had everything that I needed. And because of that, I ended up having more credits than necessary to graduate. So I didn't have to finish a whole year of senior year. I only had to do six months of senior year, you know, half a year of senior year, if that makes sense. So, um, I really, really appreciated having a teacher or a counselor like him um, in my life, um, and he was Caucasian, so that just made it even more, you know, um, prevalent to me that it didn't matter what color you are. If, if you're a good person, you're a good person, um, and he treated all of his students, you know, with a high level of respect. I can't remember a time where anybody ever complained about him. We had a dean, though, that was just opposite. And he was just, like, really, really, really strict on, you know, African-American students. And then um, he was a, I want to say he was a wrestling coach also. So the people on his team got, preferential treatment and the dean he as a dean he was just I I didn't like going I I, I didn't even like being late for class because that means I would have to go and sit in front of him and I didn't want to ever <laughs> but other than that most of the teachers in my schools both schools were very good they didn't I think they were the perfect match for us um especially dealing with um, going through integration. Um, I went to Thornwood High School in South Holland, and it was South Holland was pretty much like Hazelcrest, except there were no physical altercations. There was just a tight lip. Nobody wanted to speak to any, anybody, but by the time we got in high school and we started communicating and a black kid brought a white kid home from school. My hey mom, this is my best friend, and vice versa. Guess what? The parents end up changing their views because they saw that, wow, I'm being crazy listening to what my neighbors think or listening to what my parents taught me. These kids are good kids. And so we saw the change. We saw everybody getting along. Um, and we saw everybody just being like one big family, if that makes sense. And then Robin, it sounds like you had a really different experience um, because you were in school in a predominantly <laughs> black um, community and then got integrated in high school and then sort of, you know, went switched schools. And um, so I'm curious if you remember from that time of starting high school and it being really different and what that was like and what it felt like and some of those early experiences. Yes, I had a very different experience. And it's crazy because you would think that I would have gotten better. Yeah. So I went to uh, Allen B. Shepherd in Palos Hills Heights. I forgot. But it's like a very diverse neighborhood. So a lot of different, like I said, race, races attended the school. So it wasn't necessarily the kids. Like you said about your dean, I had, okay, I had a black dean. I'm sorry, African American Dean. And we couldn't dress a certain way by us being African American, but when it came to the Caucasians and other races, they were okay. So we had to wear skirts. If we was to wear skirts or shorts, it would have to be knee length. But then when it came to them, it could have been above the knee. And when we was asking like why and it was well you guys are built different. 
and that was pretty weird. Like body shaming. And yes, all. and it was pretty weird because I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, I didn't feel creepy vibes because you're a woman. But at the same time, why are you being feeling okay with telling me as a student this? Like, you feel that everybody should have to dress the same, no matter anything. Right. And then um, I had pretty, all of my teachers in high school were Caucasian, even when I transferred. Wow. They were nice, except this one, I want to say sophomore year, I think it was second English he, I don't know, I was pretty quiet because I didn't really know nobody in my second English class. So one day I'm just real happy. I got good news before I came to school, so I'm happy the whole day. And he got me escorted down to the nurse's office because he said I was acting unusual. But everybody in here jumping up, running around, doing what they want to do. But the moment I'm happy, I'm acting unusual. So I'm like, okay, they like literally testing me to see if I had alcohol in my system and everything. Wow. And I told my mom, my mom I'm like, I'm gonna go up there. And I'm like, no, Ma, you know, just 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 let it be. She was like, you sure? I was like, yeah, just let it be, you know. It's almost at the end of the school year. Oh wow. Yeah. So I'm like, you really didn't know me for you to assume that because I'm quiet. That makes so when I'm happy, I can't be happy. Right. That's weird. So it it was very weird. But outside of all of that, it was a great experience. That's good. Yeah, because I I've never never had any of those kind of things. Yeah, that was very me. weird. Yeah, that's kind of strange. I um I remember oh I, I remember um being in class. I was in a study hall, and they had my study hall teacher had to take in in school detention or in school suspension as well. So here you have your study hall students in with these kids who were on detention or suspension. And one of the young men poured out drugs and took drugs in the classroom in front of me. And I was just so mad at him. I was so horrified. Like, I cannot believe that I am experiencing this. I, I've never seen anybody do that. And for him to do that in front of me, I was just angry. I told him, I said, don't sit by me. Please move away from me. I don't want to get you in trouble, but you have to move away from me. I can't sit by you anymore. And it really bothered me because I think we were in senior year and it just freaked me out because I didn't I didn't want to see the outcome of what would happen. You know, I never seen anybody do that before. And uh it just made me really, really, really leery. Um, and that was, I think, the most negative experience I had in high school. That is the only negative experience I had in high school. And I was just wondering, like, if if the teachers had saw him, you know, by him sitting next to me, it's, it's almost like if you sit next to somebody and they do something wrong, everybody in that corner kind of gets the heat from it. And so I just was like, okay, let me just sit over here by myself. I didn't want to sit next to anybody after that. I didn't trust anybody after that. You want to know what's crazy? How I really don't pay attention to racism. But my sister was telling me yesterday, she was like, yeah. um," Because, you know, she just went on lunch in. Yeah. And, you know, they was on a boat. And I guess other schools were there. So she was like, yeah, it was this um, one guy. I want to say he was Hispanic. And his friends were Caucasian. And it was two African Americans, mm -hmm. and she was like, "It kind of made me." Un it, she said it kind of made her uncomfortable, but she was just looking like, you know, that ain't my business because she was saying how the Hispanics was inward, 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 and everybody like the friends just laughing and giggling and going on about the conversation. And I told her I was like, you know, well, certain people don't see a problem with it. Because, you know, certain people feel the needs, okay, this happened way back when, everything is fine now, and, you know, oh, I'm sorry, it, they moved on from certain situations. I said certain people are able to move on from it, and certain people are not. Like when we were going to Coles and the Caucasian woman who was oh, yeah. flicking us off and doing all of that to us and laughing, like taunting us. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. 
But then it happened again the same week when we were coming from out to eat and another lady flicking us off. And I'm right. like, is it we, us? We were coming like, out of Sam's Club parking lot. <laughs> I said, is it us? What yeah. do we do? But like I told her, I was like, you know, whenever you feel like you're in an uncomfortable situation, like I didn't really have no advice for her because I've never been in an uncomfortable situation where I'm hearing it like that. Like I've never heard nobody just say it like that. So I was like, you know, well... Certain racists feel as if, oh, well, you know how some Hispanics say, well, we almost the same color as y'all, so we technically, you know, stuff like that. I can, I can give you an answer um, because I had a situation at work. Um, I was the manager on duty, um, and there were, my, my staff that night was very diverse. I had African-American, Caucasian, Hispanic. And there was a, a Puerto Rican young lady who used the N-word. She was on her phone, and she was talking to someone on the phone, and she said, hey, what's up, you know, no? And I'm like, oh, you can't say that word. And then she was like, why not? This is normal. This is how we talk. And she mentioned that, that we're from the same background. And I said, um... I said, I understand that, but there are customers in the store who don't know that. There are African-American customers in the store who don't know that. They don't understand why you're saying this. They just hear the N-word, and they automatically, I mean, like clockwork, turn towards the counter where she was standing at. And I literally had to escort her off the floor because some people really got like, wow, what is going on? And I explained to her that you can't use that word on the sales floor. I don't know what you do at home outside of here and with your friends and your group of people that you hang with, and that's fine, but you can't use that word here. I didn't take offense to it because I I knew that um, some Puerto Rican people use that word just like um, like if you hear two African-American males talking to each other. They use it as a term of endearment. It's different when you're using it in a derogatory sense where you are um, being disrespectful to someone or trying to harm, hurt somebody with words. And so that's the difference. I don't like the word at all because um, it just it's just um, a demeaning word. And then because of the, the the negative history behind that word. So that's the reason why I think no one should use it. But but I just wanted to answer your question why that they were so comfortable. Yeah, and that's what I started to tell her. But back to the why African American. I never understood that. Now I'm not gonna sit over here and act like I'm a saint, like right. I don't say it, but I don't say the full word, but even then it's still me saying it. I had someone ask why via Facebook, why is it okay for us to call each other that but feel attacked when they do it? Right. And someone responded by saying because you guys have came up with the term meaning oh I'm a slave and they added, you know, a ER to it. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's different because we took the ER and just added that left the A on right. at the end. So it was as you said, I feel it's the same way. Right. But at the end of the day I can't stop nobody for saying what they want to say. Right. Like I understand the history behind it. Right. And as I was explaining to my sister, I don't really take an offense to it. But I don't know if it'd be hypocritical if I'm saying I don't take offense to it, but then I walk out here and get called that on the street, and now I'm offended. Right. It it depend and again it depends on how the person is using that word towards you, which makes it offensive or not. Um, I I don't like um, hearing young men calling each other that or women calling each other that word um, because again it's like. You don't know who you are or where you come from. And even though it is used as a slang word referring to your friends nowadays or 
or whatever, but it just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. And then if you want somebody to respect you, you have to learn how to respect yourself too. And in order for, for us to um, expect anyone to treat us like human beings, we have to treat each other like human beings as well because then that's going to always be an excuse as to why. Because I've had Facebook conversations that weren't so good uh, um, in regards to racism, especially yeah. when um, Barack Obama became president. It just was a full attack on African Americans, um, even on down to calling calling them, you know, animal names and it became a a a, a trend to refer to, to us as monkeys, apes and different things like that. And it just was really mind boggling to me because here it is, this man has a very well diverse background, uh, very educated, and to me was fair to everybody. He didn't care what color you were, and he didn't go in there with an agenda as, okay, well, now we're going to we're gonna, um, play the reversal role, and, you know, we're going to do this to y'all because y'all did this to us 20,000 years ago. He didn't come in there with that. He wanted to erase the color line. He wanted to make sure that everybody understood everybody is a human being. Anybody should be able to run for president. If they are a United States citizen, it shouldn't matter what color you are. You should be able to go get a job as a CEO of whatever corporation because of your educational background, not your ethnic background. And that is the what I took from the, the whole election. But it became a race war on Facebook and all other social medias. Um, it, 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 I remember walking down the street downtown. I was walking down Illinois Street on my way to the beach. And a pickup truck full of men hollered the n-word out at us they had no reason to say anything to us they didn't even have a reason to say hello to us they were in their truck driving past and they saw three or four black people walking down the street and they just hollered the n-word out and so to answer your question it's it's de it just depends on how the word is being used which depends on how it's going to be offensive or not um to me, we shouldn't be accepting of it because it's almost like you're giving somebody permission or you're almost daring somebody else to say it. And to me, that's just ridiculous. We just need to learn how to refer to each other by our first name. Or if we're going to say you're my friend, my sister, my brother, my cousin, or whatever relationship you have, but to use a derogatory term and it goes both ways I, I shouldn't be calling a Caucasian person or Hispanic person a, a derogatory name it you know I I try my best never to insult people so and that that's I know I'm just probably one in, in a thousand but everybody should have that same mentality like if we just carry ourselves like human beings and talk to each other with a level of respect, then a lot of the things that we're experiencing wouldn't be happening. There wouldn't be a whole lot of um, unfair treatment, um, even on the situations that's going on with the police versus citizens, civilians, or whatever you want to call it. All of this um, blue lives, black lives, you know, all of that stuff wouldn't have to exist if everybody just treated each other like human beings instead of jumping the gun or jumping on a bandwagon with somebody else. If 10 people hate this one person, we all going to hate that one person. It just doesn't make sense. And it's almost like we, we this is 2023. We should all be very much mature now. Um, and we shouldn't be teaching our kids to to hate somebody or dislike somebody based on um 
silly descriptions, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, people of all ethnic backgrounds have committed crimes, um, have done some really great things. And so to single out a person because of race is very irresponsible. I was going to ask, where do you think that comes from? Do you think that that's a value that your parents instilled from you in a young age, or do you attribute that to going to integrated schools? Well, I I just believe that it starts at home. Um, because my parents didn't allow us to mistreat people. Um, we weren't allowed to be disrespectful to anybody. Um, it didn't matter. You know, we respected authority. We respected our teachers. We respected every adult in our family, um, our neighbors. Um, and that was just a value that we was raised with. So color it didn't have anything to do with it. Um, and that was just, that was across the board. Yeah, I agree. I grew up in a um, Jehovah's Witness household. So I didn't really... Like, I know about history, but I didn't get the chance to know and think about, oh, you might go to school and there might be a child who treats you different. Like, I didn't know anything about that because I was taught that we all come from the same place. We are all brothers and sisters, just different sizes and colors. So mm -hmm. it was never, oh, well, someone is not going to like you. Like, I know it happens. I was told it happens around, but it was never told to, well, you don't like nobody because it is. And if somebody treats you unfair because you're a color, you do that back. I was never taught that. Right. So. I was going to ask Robin, you mentioned nieces, and I don't know if you have grandkids, um, but I was curious what you would like their school experiences to be like. Okay. Um. Hmm. I want for my grandkids to go, to grow up in, a, in an environment where, like I did, much like I did, not experiencing the like and dislike based on race. Um, I don't want them to experience what I went through going home from school. Um, but during school, it was a very productive environment. Because we all helped each other. We we didn't care. It didn't matter what color we were. We just went to school and we did our homework. We did what, what we were asked of. Of course, you had some behavior. You know, you always got some kid that want to act out and be a class clown. But it had nothing to do with what color we were. And so I want my grandchildren to experience that. So that when they become adults, they won't have an issue with being able to work in any environment. Uh, it I I believe it had a lot to do with me being able to adapt to my environment. Even going to college, um, it was the same thing. I had a very diverse um, school. I went to Robert Morris College downtown. Um, and it was a little different because we had to dress in career wear. So that was a culture shock for me because I'm used to just wearing whatever I you know want to wear. We didn't have to wear uniforms. We just um, wore regular clothes. And so when I went downtown, we had to dress in career wear, and that was my culture shock. So that was the only thing I could say differently. I actually want my um, nieces and nephews to experience diversity because I feel like now it's a little bit about it's a little bit better now. Yeah. Like the I don't feel like racism, but I'm not sure because my niece has um, a friend and she's from Africa. Like she has no, I'm sorry. Ooh, she's from Jamaica. Okay. So she has the Jamaican accent. So my niece is like, I have a friend and she's not from here and she's my best friend. She was like, we like sisters from different. I don't know what she called it. But I'm like, that's good. I yeah. was like telling her, you know, so she invites her everywhere. Yeah. But I want them ex to experience diversity, like to start it young. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, as you know, get older, they already know how to handle the real world. Yeah. And what comes with it. Yeah. That's Just in important. case it was a run-in. But she's a sweetheart. 
So, like, me and her mom always tell her, you know, you treat people equally. Even if they are being mean to you, you still treat people equally because we believe in blessings. You don't want to block your blessings by being rude to somebody because they didn't know any better. You mm -hmm. know better. Yeah. And like you said, it could probably turn out when they go to junior high, they become friends. Yeah. So, I try to keep that in mind. I just tell her, you know, you be nice. She likes to share everything. Yeah. That's good. And that's 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 pretty much it with me. I love diversity. I love being able to work with different people. Um, and I know we're almost out of time, but there's one um, story I wanted to mention when I worked up north in this area. Um, I worked at a place called Methodist Youth Services. It was a child welfare agency. And we had people from Russia, Germany, um, Asia, Bosnia, Oh, my God, it was so awesome. So one year we decided let's do a multicultural dinner mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving. And so we all brought food from our ethnic background, and it was amazing. And I'm so glad we did that because I got to experience food from all over the world. And I, that right there made me want to, like, continue doing that in life. And that's why I like diversity. Because my favorite question would be when they say, oh, I'm from Russia. I mean, how is it? How do you yeah. like it over there? Is it cold? Like, I like asking questions about people's home. Because, you know, we from Africa. So, oh, my God. I had somebody <laughs> ask me that one day. They was like, how is it in Africa? I was like, what? <laughs> I was born here in the United States. <laughs> but I like diversity. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with it to me. And I like what you said. Like, that would have been so fun. I yeah. I was there. Yeah, it was. Very tasty, too. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, you mentioned before we started recording that your school experiences informed where you chose to raise your kids and the environment that you wanted them to be in. Yes. Can you share a little bit more about that? Um, mostly, um, well, I, I really wanted for, like I said, my kids to um, have a diverse background. I wanted them to be able to have friends all over the world rather than just in our community where I grew up. And so I moved them to a community where it was diverse because I wanted them to experience diversity. I wanted them to be able to adapt to any work environment, any college environment. I wanted to be able to trust them when they went away to college or wherever they chose to be. I wanted to be comfortable knowing that they were safe. Some people are afraid to send their kids somewhere because, like, if you go to the South, you hear about things that happened in the past, so you'd be afraid, oh, what if my child get lost? Are they going to found, be found somewhere? Um, it did happen a couple of years ago to a young man. He was in a area where he never returned home and they you know I don't want to go through the details of it because it's hurt, hurt, hurtful to even talk about it because I have sons his age but he never returned home so that was that was a fear I didn't want to have to deal with I wanted my children to be able to communicate with a Caucasian officer with respect if a Caucasian officer pulls them over I want them to be able to ex exemplify the professionalism and not be cocky and thuggish if that makes sense I wanted them to be able to communicate articulately because it's a unnecessary and an unfortunate stigmatism or label or stereotype that black men are thugs and I didn't want them to grow up having to experience that so I'm curious about that because you use the word adapt. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about that? Is it code switching that you're talking about, like being professional, or are you are you talking about like when you send your kids places, you want them to belong, like be like they belong? right. I want them to just be able to blend in comfortably, be able to have a conversation with anybody, regardless of what where they they're from. Um, I. <laughs> I always um, get teased a lot because they said I have an accent. And I never understood what accent are you talking about. Well, like my cousins who live in the south side of Chicago, they're from the west side of Chicago. So they used to always make fun of me and say I talk white. And I'm like, how is that? What does that mean? I speak 
with articulation. I have some slang. I have a slur in my conversation. Some people say I sound like I'm from Alabama. I've never been to Alabama before. So I'm like, what what accent are you talking about? What do you mean by that? And they just would laugh. They never said anything. So that right there let me know that I can have a conversation with anybody. They'll never know where I'm from, who, you know, they can't label me, if, if that makes sense. Um, if I have a conversation with someone on the telephone, they can't even tell how old I am. So it's like I wanted my kids to have those same experiences so that they're not singled out or excluded from something. Because a, if a person who is is looking to only hire um, Caucasian or only looking to hire African American, they will not be able to tell on the phone. I don't know why that made sense to me, but it did. I was told that in uh, grammar school, mm-hmm. they was. Uh, I had a teacher, and he was like, "Whenever you guys, you know, grow up and get married and decide to have children, he was like, please name your children. I don't know if it was like a unisex or something. Not nothing too black, because as you weird. said, you would be able to look on the paper and." Nah, we not going to hire them. Because he said he experienced that growing up. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't, I ain't try to think too deep into it until I got older and realized, like, a lot now. Like, okay, well, I was a kid. I didn't really have to think right, about nothing growing about up. That. So now it's like you have to be careful with what you do, what you say, because you can offend anybody. Yeah. And now, like, the rules changed a lot. Like, you got, I don't want to be disrespectful, but you have, like, pronouns now. So it's like, um, I used to tell my sister, I'm like, it's different because you got some people who identify differently. Yeah. And she was confused. She's like, what do you mean? You, you, I'm me. And I was like, it's differently now. But since yeah. she's going to high school, she'll be able to, you know, experience that and understand what I'm talking about from a different perspective. Yeah, you mean as far as gender? Yeah, right. that and, you know, I ran into an African-American person who did not believe that they were African-American. They was, I'm not African-American. And they got mad. I wasn't about to argue with nobody. You are who you think you are. Yeah. That who is Who am Whoever I to you tell you? To identify it. Exactly. And it was people around me, like, they was going back and forth, like, yeah. really... You are black. You are, do you want me to spell the N-word out for you? And I was like, how are you going to tell them if that's what they feel, yeah. you know, but they was, they was, they was my color. So, <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't feel. So I was like, hey, you know, yeah, everybody different. But like you, you know, I, I learned now that I'm much older, I say I'm today old, <laughs> years old, when I found out that. You can go to almost every country and you're going to find um, someone that appears to be of African descent and they don't identify it. Like, um, I had a, a young lady who worked at the Methodist Youth Services with me. She was from Puerto Rico. And she said, girl, I could take you to Puerto Rico with me. If you had my accent, they wouldn't even know. That's how much... It, you know, you all look the same. And I'm like, wow, okay, well, I dealt with something new. Because I, you know, I didn't know. And to me, it just, it it made me feel good that I was being accepted by somebody outside of my race, if that makes sense. Because you hear so many different negative things. Yeah. And you see so much on TV. Um, I've watched, like, the history of slavery and stuff like that. And some of it does hurt still to see that somebody that looked like me could have been my my ancestor my great 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 grandparents being treated like that and I'm glad that somebody made a decision to stop it and I hope that that we continue to grow in a positive way and that we don't revert back to that negative behavior I actually like I said when I went to Shepherd, I had a Caucasian her name was Desiree she was like my best. I still talk to her to this day, and that's so crazy. And it was like, she, you know how people say, oh, well, you got people that try to act black, and you got people that try to act Caucasian. 
she was just her to me. Yeah. But she, I told her, girl, if I would have swore you was my sister or something, she was like, I'm probably, like, she talked as if, she just didn't care. Y'all identified, y'all, y'all. She, it wasn't that. And then for me, I would have thought that it would have been that because yeah. I was probably, it was only three African-Americans in my English one class. Yeah. So the rest was like Caucasians, Asians, and stuff like that. But it wasn't like that. Like she was, I still talk to her. Mm -hmm. She be trying to come see me and stuff like that. So it was her, she kind of affected me. Because I was like, oh, wow. Like, I thought I was going to feel uncomfortable. Like, she made me feel comfortable. That's good. And everybody else, like how it was, everybody, like, we would just sit, talk, how are we doing now? And I was like, I thought my experience here was going to be horrible. Yeah. But it was actually, that's why I said I had a nice time at Shepherd, outside of the dean and, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was very nice because everybody got along well. Yeah. It wasn't nothing different. Everybody... Played well, everybody, sports, everything, everybody got along so well, so you wouldn't think that it was a problem. If it was, I didn't know about it, and it wasn't happening around me. Yeah. So. Um, is there anything else that either of you would like to share? Um, I'm fine. <laughs> the only thing I would like to share is just... Um, I know this is about um, schools, but those students are going to become adults and it's going to, whatever they learn, whatever they experience in school is going to affect their adulthood. And so I just really, really hope and pray that th that those things, um, as far as the diversity and the inclusion and the love that it will show up in their workplace when they become adults. Um, I experienced some of both um, in my workplace, but it was mostly favorable. Um, and I really appreciate, you know, that um, in my work life. So if, if I can take everything that I learned in school and take it to my workplace. That would be awesome, you know, because it just pretty much it makes it makes life easier for everybody to just learn, find a way to get along with each other, no matter what color of skin or even if even if, even with the level of education. If you have someone who may not know as much as you, or they may may know more to you, but don't have the certificate to prove it. It shouldn't matter. As long as we are doing this thing and it's working, let's do it. I feel that I like it's resourceful. Yeah. Because, as you said, you could teach me something that I don't know because I wasn't able to learn or go as far as you because of my skin color, and I can teach you vice versa. Exactly. So I feel like it's resourceful. And like I said, I wasn't mad. 